Greetings and salutations, I'm Leo from CAD Insight and welcome to another video. In this video, it's going to invent a quick tip on partial chamfers. So let's get into it. As you see here, we've got model sent quickly, so we're just going to use a box and we can then just select it and then we just select the middle and we're just going to do a 100 millimeter cube. Very simple, pretty much automatically does it for us. You can use it, you can do a 2D sketch and extrude, which is this what it did. It's just quicker to do it that way. But anyway, I'm starting to waffle, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video. A chamfer, or more particularly a partial chamfer. So if you click on chamfer, it brings up this dialog box, and you see it's gonna have chamfer for your regular ones and partial. Now you see partial, if you try to do anything, you can't do it. Instead, what you've got to do is click a chamfer, because really a partial chamfer is just a special chamfer. So once you've set the edge, you can then click on this edge here, and you see here, it now then gives us three, technically four bits to total to the length of it, the maximum real length of it. But what it now gives you is the edge, which is the edge you selected, the start, which is the offset point, the chamfer, which is the length of the chamfered bit, and the end, which is the offset from the end. Down here, we've got the driven dimension. This is the dimension that is going to be affected by the other. You have not direct control of it, you have indirect control based on the other two parameters. So you see here, if I set chamfer as the driven dimension, the length of the chamfer is controlled by how where I put the to start and to end. So if I put in 10, it then moves up 10 mil. And if I go to end and type in 10, what it's now done is create an 80 mil chamfer because you've got two 10 mils, so that's 20 mils, of a maximum of 100, you get the maths, it does it. And see, you can change this to be whatever you want. You can, so if I just click apply, you can now click another edge, we can also go partial, we can select two edges, and we could also just say, see these are all done, it's done on a line by line basis, or edge by edge basis, so you see here, I could also do to start, I could also say, it. I have to, the end is driven, and now say make it 80, same thing, and if I go to the bottom one down here, I can say the start is the driven dimension, and you see if I select 80, it's at the expected range, as expected, and select to end. You can do the same, you can do the same thing, whatever, just using different combinations of it. Obviously choose what is optimal and what you want. Overall, that is pretty much it for partial chamfers. Why would you use it? Pretty much more for world prep, but also if you want to like edge certain bits, want to make something cool, be my guest. And that's really it to a partial chamfer. They're super basic, super cool, but something you might not have noticed if you're getting into Inventor. Thank you for watching this quick tip, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.